Jimmy Thang from Maximum PC here at GDC 2015. I'm here at Mind Maze's uh, uh, suite, speaking with their CEO and founder Tej. And Tej, can you tell me what you're holding there? This is going to be our first neuro goggle headset that is going to combine augmented reality, virtual reality, motion capture, and neuro sensing into one single headset. So you're going to be able to do fluid virtual reality and AR experiences at the same time, and emote and feel in the virtual worlds for the first time. Yeah, so I mean, it, it's a lot to absorb what you just said right there. So as of right now, you know, like with VR, you have like Oculus and, you know, Valve and things like that. And then with AR, you have, you know, HoloLens and, you know, Microsoft Solution. Uh, not only are you guys trying to combine the two, but you're trying to add an, uh, an area of like sort of mind meld integration, so to speak, uh, to put it into Nerd Talk. Um, I mean, can you sort of talk about like your background? I know you mentioned off camera that you've you know worked a lot in, in uh, right. the medical field and things like that. Right. I, I mean, so I'm a neuroscientist coming from the neuroscience perspective, which mind Maze traditionally does. What we've done is a lot of virtual reality experiences to help patients recover from different deficits, neurological deficits, and what happens there is latencies are important. How the brain works in millisecond synchronization is important. So we've always always worked with virtual reality technology, so motion capture and 3D rendering that was synced to the millisecond. And we're bringing that to the consumer space. So in a sense, if I was, let's say, stressed in a virtual environment, let's say I'm playing a first-person shooter game and I put on the Mind Leap headset and I had too many people firing at me and I was stressed enough, the system would engage into my system and I, it could make me disappear, it could make me develop a superpower. So there's different kinds of possibilities that it brings to the table. Now, in terms of combining this with embedded motion capture, that's the next leap anyways, to be able to see your hands, uh, to visualize you know, fingers in virtual worlds is extremely important for you to feel present in these environments. And that is something that we're gonna go up with all the other goggle manufacturers. We wanna enhance that and add a layer of, uh, how do you say, intuitive sensing into these environments so it feels very real. And that, that's what we're gonna bring. And yeah, and I actually just had a chance to, to try that headset on myself. So, I mean, there's, there's a lot going on there. I mean, there's uh, two cameras on there, right, for, uh, for stereo for when you're in the AR segment. Right. And then there's like a depth, depth sensing camera as well. And so I think, so one of the modes I tried, you know, I was in the, the AR mode, like I can lift up my hands because there's a camera on there that tracks, you know, hand right. gestures and things like that. And my fingertips were on fire. Right. And then I could, you know, turn my head over and that sort of swaps into the VR mode. Yeah. And I was sort of looking at like the night sky into like yes. uh, outer space, and then if I put my hands up, they all look, they look uh, you know very matrixly like digital, right. uh, and and you know it's it's very interesting because nobody is uh, as far as I know is doing something like this. Yeah. Can you sort of talk about uh, the you know you guys blending the two? Absolutely, and and I think the experience you talked about just now that said is what exemplifies this perfectly. Is in a sense I'm looking at my fingers in the real world in the AR mode, right? And I can see them go on fire. And there's two things I can do with it. I can either immediately get into a virtual world to get rid of the fire, right? To get rid of this experience, or I can modulate that fire by just saying, I want to calm down and that becomes snow. And that's one thing you can experience. And the second thing is to enable that experience, we've really gotten the latency down with the way the motion capture camera works and synchronizes that with the rendering too and the way the brain imaging works. Because when you turn right, your left hand was augmented reality and the camera switch off and you get into the virtual mode and then the motion capture kicks on. So you're able to then see your hands, that you were seeing in the real world with finger tracking now having motion capture in the virtual world. So that fluid switch is extremely tough to do and to do it at those latencies when you're able to imagine and bring those senses in and that's going to be the key. That's the key of synchronization is what we're bringing and that enables this experience. Is it possible to, to sort of combine both of them at the same time? <laughs> um, or is that too difficult of a problem to solve at the moment? I, I think the fact, uh, they could be simultaneously available, but I think it's the content that's going to drive it. The fact that we enable it, it is possible in the headset and at, at a point because we can do both, right? You can choose one camera off that can go into augmented reality and you get one side into VR, but I think it's the content that's going to drive that kind of experience. We've enabled the process and now it's, it's, we have to see how that, that can be uh, you know, implemented into different experiences. Okay, and can you sort of talk about the, the technical specs of the device? Some, some people are worried about, you know, resolution, latency, refresh rate, things like that. Can you t touch upon that? I know um, this is a prototype, but... Yeah, this, as you said, <clears throat> so we, we've picked up standard optics and, you know, standard uh, screens. So the, the, the field of view is right now at 60 degrees. Uh, it, it, uh, the resolution is on SVGA, yeah. But the, the fact is, with this prototype, our focus was to get the synchronization right. 
and then it's going to become lighter in the field of view. Is going to our goal is to get to around 120. Okay. And so on and so forth. So as we systematically launch in the next six months and we build our SDKs and APIs, I think we're also going to improve on the hardware specs as we also find partners. So. Okay. And uh, so you guys, you know, you just mentioned that you want to find partners and things like that. Um, are you guys also looking? So you guys want to license it, but also potentially release a own dedicated headset yourself? Is that correct? Oh, yes. So we're looking at different aspects just because the device does or enables these different capabilities. We're looking at hardware partners, content creators, and developers too, right, to contribute to this, this spectrum. And then eventually, in the process of doing this, we will also launch and you know get a headset out that that you know enables all these capabilities ourselves. So we, we will go down both streams. Okay. And uh, on the AR aspect, you know, I've had a chance to try out the HoloLens, yeah. and in Microsoft's uh, demo, yeah. you know, I was put in a room where, like, you know, you look down, you see, like, a coffee table with, like, nothing on it, and then you put the HoloLens on, and all of a sudden there's, like, a Minecraft castle on there. Right. Can, can this do something like that? Absolutely. And once we have access to that kind of content, this enables it for sure. You know, the fact that we can do finger tracking, you know, motion capture, everything embedded, these are experiences we can enable, too, once we have the access to the content. Okay, and then, um, and you know, what do you guys uh, plan to do with the sort of the mind? I don't, for lack of a better word, the mind melt stuff, where if you're feeling you know stressed out. Um. I, I think fundamentally, from the neuroscience perspective, you know, we've done this to for, for these patients to maybe control robotic arms, right, or you know, accelerate recovery for patients with a stroke. But the same elements in terms of how your mental health plays in, how your you know brain's level of playing across a game can improve. So let's say it's no more a scorecard on the board, it's essentially because you're getting better with your brain's capabilities that you're jumping a level in a game, right? So there's different other metrics you can use the brain sensing for, but on the most basic level, it's about, uh, it's about integrating touch, vision, you know, what I feel, how I move. The brain does this for you, so it's easier if the brain actually then can play in as a controller into your games. It's natural, right? So one of the other demos that I tried with you guys is it wasn't involving with the headset, but it, it you know took that uh, basically I wore a strap um, that I guess measured uh, my mental mind waves, so to yeah. speak, yeah. and then I competed. It, you guys made a game out of it where you know I was competing with somebody else who was wearing the same device, and we're pl essentially playing like a, a mental game of tug of war. Right. Um, and you know just by like if you the concept was basically if you relax. You build up more strength, essentially, right? Yes. And then, and, uh, and and you know, while that sounds really interesting, I think I've heard that pitch for a long time now, like many GDCs in the past. And a lot of people might think it's like hogwash, you know? How how can you read yeah. someone's mind? Uh, uh, you know, I don't think we're there yet. And for you know, in th those. So what do you have to say about that? I think the <clears> fact <throat> that we've done this for ten years and we've successfully put this on patients who can control robotic arms uh, shows that we can do this robustly enough and in a more serious way. So we have clinical data; it's a medical device. The quality is there, but to bring that down here in, in the context of a game development scenario, I think the, just measuring simple signals like binary signals of you relaxing or not is easy to visualize as you saw in the game. But you're seeing a higher resolution net right here in front of me. We can actually then say, okay, I want to imagine to move my arm. And that's something you can visualize immediately in the virtual world, right? So that's more tangible. A tangible way of showing that we're really decoding brain signals and, you know, feeding them into a computer or a gaming engine. So there's different ways to implement this. Uh, it's, it's not really related to the gaming aspect, but can you talk about the story about the, when you mentioned about the phantom limb? Right. <coughs> and that's a good example of this is, is, is why the mind plays into this. Because uh, in, a, in a phantom... Uh, pain situation. So it, let's say there's an amputee patient who's lost both his limbs, right? And a lot of these patients end up having phantom sensations and pain because they can't essentially move these limbs into their fixed. What we do is we put our headset on them and these guys have to imagine they can move these limbs. So they're saying, okay, I have severe pain. What do I do? I imagine I can move these hands and they see these limbs move in the virtual world. So an avatar moves for them and instantaneously gets rid of the pain. So it's immediate relief from the pain and that's that's an extremely powerful experience for these guys and whenever they have the pain they just imagine they see it happen so it's that intention piece of it which ties into the timing too because you can tap into it before movement execution so that's the real time piece of it okay it seems like you guys i mean obviously you guys come from like a medical background right. what what is inspiring you to be here at gdc game developers conference uh and to get into the gaming space right i mean uh, i've also been a gamer you know i'm a vr enthusiast and the fact that i've used virtual reality over 10 years now systematically to help different patients 
it's always been obvious me, for me that that quality needs to come into consumer experiences for VR experiences to be better. Honestly, the fact that we intuitively think that you know, latency has got to be right, this is something that we know forever. So we want to bring that in. So now uh, we want consumers and game developers to build real experiences now that they have the ability to do everything you know, together in one space. And so for me, it's an obvious fit, uh, though coming from that space. Cool, and I, I know just going back to the topic of like licensing, uh, you know, your yeah. your tools. Have you been talking to you know the big players out there like you know Oculus and, and, and Valve <laughs> we, and whatnot? We, we, we're talking to a few uh, players. Uh, we like, like you see, we're debuting the technology now. So over the next weeks, we'll be having more discussions too, and it's going to be not just you know the the goggle makers too, but just purely hardware partners, content creators. So it's going to be different conversations. Cool, and then when can? Uh, can you just expect to see something like this out there on the market? So, uh, I mean, uh, six months down the line, we hope to have an SDK uh, and you know, an API available. I, we are hoping towards end of 2015, early 2016, we'll have something that you, you can use. Like uh, like dev kits or a consumer? Okay, dev kits, cool. And then uh, do you guys have like a sort of a, a price range or anything like that? We will be in the competitive landscape and you know, they'll be priced around the same products out in the market. Uh, these specs will also come down because of the modularity. There's going to be different price points and they're all going to be in the price points that are out there right now, regardless. Okay, and uh, and this will this will interface. You know, at Maximum PC, we, you know, we cover hardware and computers, and this will yes. be interfacing with uh, with your PC. Yes. Across okay. Platform too. Yes. Okay, gotcha. And uh, I mean, just I'll leave it up to you. The last thing, anything you want to tell our readers about the device? No, I think uh, look out for it. Uh, it's going to be fantastic. It's going to be the first device that brings all your senses together and you know, technically capable and compatible. So. Yeah, we're excited to be and we hope you are. Cool, thank you, Tesh. Cheers.